Hi, LLMK here. I'm vlogging from the boyfriend's apartment again. Today I have a guest. Hello. This is my friend Lisa, otherwise known as Jabberwocky or Orzelby Alley or Wolf in the Walls. I have too many names for my own good. She does. They're hard to keep track of, but for today she is Lisa. Uh, just for, just so I don't get confused. Too many names. Way too many names. Um, I wanted to mention that there might be Avengers spoilers later on in the vlog, so if you haven't seen Avengers, go see them. Right now. Right now. Just solves the pause, whole problem. Pause the vlog and go run out and watch. It solves the whole problem, and then you can watch the vlog later. Yeah. Yay! We'll still be here. Mm-hmm. Promise. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Austin Bishop for the One Lovely Vlog nomination. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your kind words, and I will start writing that up later this week, as well as the other like five blog ideas I have. Sorry, I've been a little um, neglecting the actual blog part. Well, things have been busy lately. They have been. So, since I have a guest here today, and she's the one who got me into role playing, we're going to discuss role playing. If you're actually wondering who I am, uh, the person she credits in her book for use of Night City and Babylon, that would be me. I'm responsible for that. Night City is a novel series I'm working on, slowly, and Babylon is one of the major players. He's but I can't give too much away. He's one of my favorites. Um, so when her books come out, you've got to read them. They're going to be great. Sci-fi fantasy? Uh, a little yeah, bit of both. a little bit of both. Modern sci-fi fantasy. So... When she gets her books published, read them. It'll be good. Yep. So moving into the RP stuff. Uh, we played the Marvel Tabletop game this weekend. The Marvel Tabletop game is really old. It's... To put it into perspective, their background on Tony Stark mentions communists and not terrorists. Hades. It's very old. But I updated... I updated Loki and Tony Stark for some players, and I rolled up characters. Mm -hmm. Marvel is a very free system. You can create almost anything, all based on how you roll your dice. Um, what did we do this week? We went to... I brought Silent Hill to Manhattan this week Yes. for the session, because I've won wanted to do it for a long time, and now I was actually able to with a group of players. We had... Tony Stark as probably the main character, arguably the main character. My boyfriend's playing Tony. Yes. He's doing a good Tony. He's a very good Tony. But we have a, a mutant, an altered human, think like Fantastic Four, they're altered humans. A high tech like Tony Stark or War Machine or mm -hmm. anyone. Robot. Robot. We have an alien who hasn't the player playing our alien hasn't figured out what kind of alien she is yet, but and we have a robot too. We have a very nice spread of characters. The dice were hating people. The too. dice were hating people. Yes. I was playing Loki. I didn't pop in until about halfway through the session. I wasn't feeling well for the first half. But once I was feeling well, magically I had dice and I was rolling and the fun thing about Marvel is that don't plan for anything. It will go completely off the wall. For Loki's example here, <laughs> when I brought Loki in, they had just been crawling through this hellscape, and they opened a door, and there was Loki just standing there. Surrounded by dead horse babies. Surrounded by dead horse babies, because it's Silent Hill. And Tony Stark's first reaction was to try to kill Loki. He failed. And because Tony Stark did it, everyone else had to try to do it themselves. Because apparently I am unlikable. Yes. Even better, after they had tried to kill Loki and failed because someone rolled really well and would have actually killed Loki. Close to. Close to kill Loki. Yeah, I've had about 50 HP left, I think. Yes. I... <laughs> uh, after they had tried to kill Loki and failed due to an executive decision... They turned. Everyone who was not Tony Stark went, Who are you? They didn't know who this person was. And so they tried to kill him. 
So, as a character, I had to ask, where have you been for the last six months? Since we were playing post-Avengers. Post movie verse Avengers. So, uh, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers! 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 Loki happened, I'm just gonna say it. They but should have known who I they was. They should have known, but apparently they didn't. Well, they had to, the lady players had to roll, uh... The, I did make the lady players roll, uh, psyche, psyche tests. tests to make sure their <laughs> ovaries didn't explode. One of them did. One of them did. Poor girl. Yes. It still made for a great game. It was a great, great session. It was. And it's going to continue on, and yep. it'll be fun. It will be. So, on the topic of Marvel and Avengers, we wanted to give a shout out to our two favorite um, Tumblr are peers. Uh, this is Steve and a Tony. Steve and a Tony. Uh, They're awesome. Uh, yes. <laughs> Huge shout out to This is the Fun Bee and Soldier Out of Time. Yes. You guys are definitely my favorite Tony and Steves on Tumblr. And to make it clear, you guys are the only Steve and Tony I follow on Tumblr. I, <laughs> I have not been able to bring myself to follow others. Because those, you guys are the only two I know who actually interact with characters not in your own universe. Which is awesome. Which is awesome. Because Tony and Moriarty... Tony yeah. and Moriarty were <laughs> going back and forth for a while. It makes us laugh and smile. It did make me smile greatly. So, you guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Keep doing what you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're always invited to the live streams, as you guys know. Please come hang out with us again. So, more RP stuff. More RP stuff. Dragons. Dragons. Always dragons. Always dragons. So, we have um, a Dragon Riders of Pern RP site. It's, it's called... It's non-canon, alternate universe. You have to specify non-canon, because canon sucks. And we have lots of pretty colors. Yep. We're called Aces in Exile. I'm one of the two admins. I'm the bad cop admin. But she's a very good at this. <laughs> I'm good at what I do, and sometimes it just means I have to be mean. It's a fun environment to play. Yes. If you love dragons, I'd say at least check us out, because it's fun. Yes. We have a ton of adoptables up still, so you don't have to wait for a hatching to get a dragon. Moriarty and Minecraft are up right now, aren't they? Yes, Moriarty and Minecraft yeah. are in our adoptable bin right now. Sherlock and John got snapped up right away. She's Sorry. just dangling bait for everyone. I do. Uh, Nick Fury is still up for adoption as well. He is. Yes. I'm a very cruel admin in that if there are adoptables sitting alo alone for too long, I'll just sneak popular characters into their profiles and see how long it takes them to get adopted. I almost took Sherlock, but I really don't need any more characters. And then I almost took Moriarty, but I need another manipulative character like I need another hole in my head. A mother, yes. Yes, and mouth, ears, and, you know, nose, mouth, ears. Standard ones. Standard ones. Don't need, a, you know, a non-standard hole in the head, yes. to be more specific. But it's a fun place to play. We have some canon characters from many series. Yep. Uh, we'll have the Avengers Dragons up for a contest in about a month. <laughs> <laughs> she may want them! Some of them, some yes. Some of them. There's some very pretty dragons in there, which... She wants the Loki dragon. He's so pretty. Well, is it going to be he or is it going to be she? We don't know yet. It's a very pretty green dragon with gold markings. It's gorgeous. Um, yes. Our uh, other admin, Risa, made them. They're on her Tumblr. And uh, made the original albino has yes. them. We'll post a link to her Tumblr because reasons... reasons. So, as I have another writer on my vlog today, I figured I'd ask her a few questions that deal with writing. I'm sure that we'll somehow get back to RP and Avengers, because a lot of things just kind of spiral back to things, those for us. Yeah. So, well, RPing is a good writing exercise. It is. I treat it as character development. Alternate character development. I've had many characters develop through RPs. Yes. Helps me get to know them, too. Yes. I have two characters that I haven't written very much, just running around on aces. One of which is one of your favorites, and the other of which is one of my favorites. <laughs> anyway. 
See, everything just comes back to RP eventually. Yes. Definitely as a writer, at least give it a shot. Maybe take a character that you don't work with very often, or one that seems to be stuck in a rut, and bring him to an RP site. Just test him out. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you'll grow. You'll do a fair bit of growth as a writer, and your characters will grow pretty well as well. Yes. Back to those Back writer to those questions. What do you usually start with when you're writing? I usually start with a vague semblance of a plot, something very simple, such as uh, go rescue the princess. I don't know anything else about the situation, it's just a very basic, basic plot to string along. And then I'll pick through my characters to see who is the best choice to go rescue this princess. And maybe it's not just one character. Uh, I take, we'll take Nemo for example. Nemo is one of my newer characters. She's hard to describe, but powerful. Powerful, last of her kind that she knows of. Novel character. Uh, she's not a time lord. <clears throat> no, she's. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she's she's a character out of time. She was born in a more medieval sort of setting, and the world just kind of passed her by. It moved, she didn't. So she's now in a more modern day. And you know, she's still... She's still very... I don't want to quite say old-fashioned. Set in her ways. Is set that a better ways is a better way to describe her, yeah. I think. Yeah. So she's... She's developing... She has to get through this new strange world where not everyone's riding horses and technology hurts her basically. Magic and technology don't play very well together. So I forgot where I was going with this. You were given a character. I was given a... yes. Uh, assuming she's the best choice for this go save the princess thing, I'll... Yeah. <laughs> Well, she's a noble character. Yes. She'd go do it. I'll pick through some of my other characters and see if she wants to go alone. You can do it, but I'd prefer at least two characters. A little bit of interaction between them. Three characters is a good dynamic. Yes, two to three is a pretty good dynamic. Mm -hmm. So I, I would end up picking through my other characters to see who would be a good fit and she who she wouldn't kill on the way there. I know characters of mine that she would outright kill. Stratton. Cheshire. Cheshire. <laughs> yes. But in something like that, you have to be conscious of how characters are affected by one another. Nemo and Perseus, who's event actually, he's a robot, kind of. There's, there's, I don't think they can be in the same room, can they? They can't be in the same room together no. because technology can kill her. And he's all tech. He's all technology. So therefore, those two would not be good choices to go off and save a princess. Probably because... Uh, if Even if Perseus couldn't kill Nemo, Perseus would want to dissect the princess. <laughs> and we can't have that happen. He likes brain meats. He does. So I'd have to pick someone... Someone with a good dynamic, but without the killing. Babylon. Someone like Babylon, yeah. who I still can't go into too much detail about. Spoilers. Spoilers. But without going into his, what he is, he's a very snarky and witty sort of... Devilish. Devilish. <laughs> so it would be a good dynamic between snarky and devilish to stoic and duty-driven, like Tony and Cap. Yes. Everything does come back to that. Anyway. Everything does come back to the <laughs> Avengers, yes. So, I was wondering where you draw your inspiration from. I everywhere. draw from nightmares and stuff like that. Everything and everywhere. Yes. It's not a very helpful example. Nope. But <laughs> a lot of music, a lot of, lot of Nightwish, Decemberist, Sabaton. All the Sabaton. All the Sabaton. I was going to mention someone else, and I forgot who it was. Odyssey Eurobeat. He does 
that pony? Yeah, yeah. That's super pony beat. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but he does a lot of amazing remixes. Super pony beat's awesome. Don't diss on it. <laughs> Not. You were I the know. one who laughed. Well, it's Snarked. I was trying to remember the name. But a lot of music, even uh, non-instrumental stuff, a lot of Chopin. Chopin's awesome. Chopin's awesome. Yes, but look everywhere for m inspiration, really. I mean, sitting here, I can look out the window and compose a scene with just the trees I see out there. Nice little and suburbia back over there, too. Yeah. It would end up being some sort of horror. I can make horror out of a sunny day. Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Anyway. I keep bringing up Silent Hill, but it is a fun sandbox to play in. For her. For me. Yes. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Music. Everything around me. Movies a lot. I like to look at movies and go, what would have happened if things went wrong? Or things went worse? How can I make this movie worse? <laughs> What would happen if Loki won in Thor? <laughs> yes, what would happen if Loki won? Arguably. <laughs> we can argue he did win, but a more anyway. overt victory. <laughs> yes, I like things like that. I was the child watching Power Rangers who thought, what would happen if they ever lost? Fun things. Fun things, yes. No. And it may paint me as a terrible person, but a lot of the fun comes from when the heroes lose. It does. And it makes them develop more as characters. Because winning doesn't really enforce anything. Ooh. Doesn't make them change. Unless there's a loss in That's that why day. I love Civil War so much. No one won in Civil War. I should explain that. Civil War is an extremely gut-wrenching uh, Marvel comic arc where basically uh, the Avengers, ed everyone was either for the Superhero Registration Act or against it. Tony Stark was for it, Captain America was against it. It ended poorly. No one won, but there was a lot of great character development. <laughs> it will hit you right in your feels. Feels. But on the note of movies for inspiration, it kind of brings us back to RP. It's why we put um, characters from different canons into uh, Pern. Yes. Because Pern is such a different sandbox. I play Loki in the Pern site, too. And on another site, I play four Lokis. She plays four Lokis total. All really different, yes. and all super fun, and do I play them well? You do play them well. But my Loki on the Dragon site has a dog. And he's vitally different than what he is in the Avengers or even Thor. Yes. And he's very fun. He is a lot of fun. He hasn't taken his downward spiral into the dark yet, which... Give it a few months. Give it a few months. But that's what makes him interesting, is seeing him before the fall. Yes. And watching him interact with characters that he wouldn't normally interact with. He normally wouldn't interact with Vincent Fantahive. Nope. But I brought... Or Friedrich... Friedrich Chopin. Yes. Or... Aria from my novel. Aria from the novel. <laughs> yeah, she's on there too. So if you want to interact with her, join the site. Yes. Um, uh, you have piano on there too. I do. He's a dragon. And Jinto. Jinto. Jinto just got a dragon who is absolutely got a insane. Crazy dragon. I love the dragon. Oh yes. Risa made this last clutch, and they are amazing dragons. They're all pretty. That's another thing about Pern that I recommend for people. It gives you a chance to... If you get a dragon that has babies, it gives you a chance to play with mashing different personality types together. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work that goes into it, though. Yes. I've done... you done five hatchlings? Yeah, I've done five hatchings so far. It'll be six in it'll be six Christmas. No, it'll be six in October. Oh, right. Heard of. Sorry. Yes. Six in October. And it is so much work. A lot of people who run Pern will burn out after their first hatching. Because it is... You have to create 
anywhere from one to depending, depending on, the on the dragon or the site, one to about forty some eggs. Yeah. That is a lot of new characters you just have to create. My hatching was only four dragons, and it was still stressful. Yes. Very fun, but stressful. And it was a nice hatching. I didn't really maul anyone at all. Yes. But we're probably getting up there in the minutes. Yep. So we went off on a whole weird area. Yes. So thanks for putting up with our rambling. Yes. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next week. See you whenever I'm here. <laughs>